Welcome to Eventful Endeavors, secrets to crafting the perfect celebration. If you're planning an event and looking for useful tips from industry experts, you're in the right place. So get ready to take some notes and we'll dive right in. This is Eventful Endeavors. Hello, everybody. This is Nate with Felix and Fingers. I'm here with the amazing Christy Silva. Um, she is the founder and lead planner extraordinaire with Weddings by Christy, uh, which she started to sort of be the change in the wedding industry. And she and her team are really committed uh, to running an assumption-free wedding business where couples' values and priorities are just absolutely put first. Um, she brings her background in nonprofit and her experience as a project manager, and it's really set them apart uh, as being one of the best in the industry. And they like to say that they're experts at giving uh, their couples uh, a wedding that makes their guests say, this is so you. Um, and so I'm really excited to be here with you. Christy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Ab absolutely. I'm so excited. Um, we're, we're actually going to be working with you in, in June. And yes, I'm, I'm really, excited. Uh, just thrilled that we get a chance to kind of powwow and chat a little bit before the wedding. Um, so I wanted to kind of start with just a little bit of a softball. I wanted to ask you uh, about, I guess, tell me about your most recent wedding. Is there anything like especially cool or noteworthy? Um, did you want to shout out the couple um, for your, <laughs> your most recent wedding? Um, yeah, we actually just had a wedding this uh, past weekend, um, and it was um, a, more, definitely unique and different from a lot of the weddings we do because it was um, what some would call a micro wedding. Uh -huh. So it was a total of 15 people, including oh. the couple. Um, very intimate, very casual, um, and it was really nice. Um, and so they pretty much got their closest friends and family together to see them get married. They had nice, short, sweet ceremony where they exchanged vows that they wrote themselves um, and then had a you know cocktail hour, moved um, downstairs for dinner and then um, dessert and drinks to, to finish the night. And it was it was great. They were very smooth. Couple was happy. Um, and I always like, you know, seeing something different. There was no, you know, wasn't, there wasn't dancing in a dance floor and it wasn't the um, kind of big party vibe like a lot of weddings are, which I also mean, I love that also. Um, but, uh, you know, I also love love an intimate wedding. Okay. And so it was well, very sweet. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. Some of my favorite weddings that I've gotten to be a part of were actually like 30 people or less. Yeah. Um, so much so that actually my own wedding is going to be that small. And uh, oh, I love some, that. Some okay, cool. It can be really special and really just that intimacy because when you have a wedding that's that small, it's just all your favorite people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> there's no, uh, there's no, I don't, there's no additional folks. <laughs> yes. And it's like you, and you so, get time um, with everybody, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's certainly the reason I'm doing it myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I wanted to. Learn so I know I'm really excited to learn a little bit more, and I'm certain everyone else that's watching this will also be excited to learn a little bit about Weddings by Christie. So tell me a little bit about what makes you all specifically unique. Yeah, so I'd say, you know, something that, and speaking both, both from kind of my own perspective and also from what the couples who have worked mm -hmm. with us have told us <laughs> um, about why they chose to work with us or what they like about working um, with us is just like our approach to wedding planning um, is very much more like it's like chill and casual. Um, but, and I always tell people that like as a, you know, I'm, I'm part of, um, I lead a team. Yeah, and so we are, we we take our job very seriously, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. Um, okay. It's usually how I explain it. And so, um, you oh, know, we, yeah, so we want wedding planning to be fun and, um, you know, at, at the very least, not a completely overwhelming, stressful experience. And so we try to take the burden of the mm -hmm. kind of more logistical nitty gritty or just anything that the couple is less excited about off their plate and let them focus on the parts of the wedding that they are most excited about. Um, and so we can kind of be as hands on or hands off as needed based off the couple. So like the way that we work with people is very different, to, you know, for every wedding because we try yeah. to meet people where they are um, to craft, you know, both the wedding planning experience that they're looking for. And then of course, like the wedding day itself. Oh yeah. It, you know, it's funny you, you kind of speak to that because you talked about taking, you know, what you do very, very seriously. I've heard you self-describe as like your, the, the type A wedding friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and so that was something that I, uh, and so that, that's really cool. And actually I was, uh, I really wanted to kind of know how that, it's actually one of the questions I wanted to ask you is kind of how that fits together. Cause I, you know, in our conversations, I noticed you guys, you don't take yourselves too seriously, but, um, you know, it's clear that, you know, when the, when some, something needs done, Christy's going to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. And I think, you know, for us, it's important <laughs> that we're um, dependable and that people can rely on us. And that's both like our clients, but also the vendor team who's looking, you know, at us as mm -hmm. the coordinator, the orchestrator yeah. of the event, but also that people are comfortable mm -hmm. coming to us with their questions, their concerns, their worries. Um, you know, we want them to see like us, right. you know, my team and I as like a safe place for them to talk about things. Um, and so, you know, sometimes it's like logistics and sometimes it's eventing <laughs> and we're very open to either. And so, um, <laughs> that balance of just knowing that like, you can trust us, we're here for you. Um, and you know, we want what's best for you and, and your wedding. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm stealing that term by the way, eventing. <laughs> stealing that term. Uh, so, I wanted to talk not just about, you know, you and I, but a little bit about the kind of the industry as a whole. I mean, you seem to have your finger on the pulse. So I'm going to ask you a couple of pretty difficult questions. <laughs> but uh, like, what is what is a current trend or thing that's happening in the industry that really gets you excited? Hmm. That's a good question. I think something. <laughs> I warned you it would be a tough Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing more people um, being comfortable kind of straying from tradition, um, which I love to see. And, you know, for me, mm -hmm. I really believe that weddings are so personal. And so, like, your wedding should be very personal um, in that, you know, not doing any tradition just because, like, it's what people do. Um, if it's not meaningful to you, if it's not genuine um, to like you and your partner and it doesn't feel like authentic to you, um, I'm seeing more couples being willing to kind of abandon yeah. those parts of weddings um, that just don't resonate with them and do something a little different. And now those kind of non-traditional things are honestly becoming a bit more traditional in the sense that like they are the new tradition. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm saying, um, you know, whether it's like shorter ceremonies, um, not having a wedding party, you know, getting rid of, you know, different dances oh. or, you know, like the bouquet toss or things like that. And of course, like also having those things and having a traditional wedding is also wonderful and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just about like doing it because you want to, not because you feel like you're supposed to. Right. Right. There's a, there's a big difference between doing something in a wedding because it's what you want or, you know, especially what you've dreamed of and doing it just because it's the done thing. Yes. So, yeah, no, I totally get that. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's, it can be fun to kind of buck traditions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> so. So this next question is going to be probably just as hard, but I'm going to ask kind of about the reverse. Uh, what are something that you think couples should just never do? Like cringeworthy things that you like, I always <laughs> kind of hate seeing at a wedding or an event. Is there anything that, that meets kind of that description? Nothing that I'd say is, um, maybe not just like cringe worthy, especially because I'm again, going back to like, if that's what you and your fiance want, but other people would think that it's cringe, well, it's not their wedding and it's not for them. <laughs> um, so do it. Um, my, I guess, like exception to yeah. that and things as far as like, you know, would never see would be anything that is mm -hmm. harmful to the guest experience. Because um, as much as the wedding day is about you and your fiance, um, you also are bringing kind of all these people who are important to you together and they're traveling and they're spending money um, because they love you and they want to celebrate you. And so it's important to um, keep them in mind as you structure oh, yeah. your day. And so just making sure, you know, I think like having a cocktail hour that's too long would be something um, that I've seen and not so much with weddings that I plan and coordinate because yeah. I advise against this, <laughs> but at other weddings, um, because guests are getting restless and they're ready for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, an hour is perfect. It's called cocktail hour for a reason. You start hitting 90 minutes, like two hours, like you're, you know, um, guests are, they, they're going to get tired of standing around and mingling um, after that long. And so just thinking of things like that as far as timeline. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, just making sure that your guests are fed um, and you have enough 
servers and enough food to make sure everyone is fed in a good <laughs> amount of time, same kind of thing. If like the last table to get their plates had to wait two hours to get their food, like that's gonna disrupt their experience and then that is what they will remember about your wedding. <laughs> um, and so, you know, really keeping timeline in mind and um, if you yeah. have like a planner um, or a coordinator, they should very much be aware and pointing those things out to you. Um, but like if you don't, you know, ask your caterer um, about how long these things take and what their experience is and what they see works well, and then trust them. Um, <laughs> uh, because, you know, assuming that you've chosen a professional caterer, um, you know, they've they've seen this before. And so just keeping those kinds of things in mind. Right. Right. So turning things back around to the positive, I know we talked a little bit about trends, but we've also talked a lot about bucking trends. Right. <laughs> so what is... If you were to think back over the last few years, is there a specific, like, unique or, like, especially fun idea that you saw at one of your weddings? Like, oh, my gosh, I have to tell everyone about this. Is there something that you're, like, you wish could become a trend? <laughs> yeah, definitely. The first thing that comes to mind is something that now I've encouraged couples to do at a few weddings, and it's been successful every time, so I'm going to continue to recommend it to those who are open to it, um, which is doing like a, there's different things you could call it, but like a photo bomb, I guess is what I would call it. Um, and a lot of people are familiar with like the photo rush or like a table rush, and DJ see that all the time. I'm sure you all are familiar yeah. with it. The couple runs to each table um, and takes a picture, mm -hmm. you know, before the song is up. And the idea is that it's like quick and you get it over with. Um, but in my opinion, those pictures are always a little right. subpar because <laughs> it's a, like a group standing around a table, which isn't great. And it's a bit more just kind of like pose, but also not necessarily the best because the photographer didn't get to pick the best spot in the right lighting because you're just kind of stuck at your table. Mm -hmm. um, and so I encourage couples to do a bit of a reverse of that, um, which is that we put two chairs on the dance floor and have the couple sit down in the chairs and then the guests have until the end of the song to come up to the couple and get a picture with them. Um, and how long that is, is totally up to like, I always say, like I tell the DJ or um, whoever the MC is, you know, the band, whoever, um, to like, they can loop the song, they can play a second song, like make sure everyone who wants a photo gets a photo. Um, but the idea is to tell guests that like, you have until the end of the song, that way they, yeah. Are, you know, there's a sense of urgency. <laughs> um, and the pictures are so much more fun because people, it's, they don't come up by table. That's the other thing. They do not come up by table. They can come up by themselves. They can come with just their partner, their family. You know, tables are usually like a mix of groups. Some people might not know each other. Um, so getting an opportunity to get a picture with the couple with just you or just you and your partner or, you know, their D and D group can come up and take a picture or whatever right. it is. Um, and the pictures are always more spontaneous. There's movement. It's fun. Um, I love it. And I wish everyone would do it <laughs> oh yeah that's that's such a great thing and yes you're right um i have seen it and i've actually seen it the way you're describing um this past fall we actually nice. had a couple that not only did that but they had a table like a, just a folding table full of like props and stuff that as guests were kind of lining up to like do these photos with the photographer they could grab anything okay, on the cool. table as like a prop and there were some hilarious <laughs> but amazing photos that's a great um, idea you know, they were a very very uh like high spirit fun group um but it was almost like their own version of a photo group. right yes exactly <laughs> but yeah we, yes <laughs> and because of that like granted it wasn't all the tape you know all the tables within one song it was maybe maybe three songs but it was seven minutes and Everybody got like a really unique kind yeah. of photo that they definitely wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Um, yeah, really cool idea. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of speaking from your experience. Uh, so if you were to offer a piece of advice to uh, a couple that is just starting their journey, what would that kind of first step advice be? I think... The first thing, you know, for couples who are like, yeah, like just engaged, haven't booked a venue, right, like very beginning of their journey, um, would be to sit down with each other and identify your top, like, three priorities for your mm -hmm. day. What are the three things that are most important to you? And that might be mm -hmm. 
time with your guests. It might be the food, it might be the music, the photos, you know, whatever it is, um, but deciding what those three things are. And then kind of on the reverse, what are the three things that like, if you need to cut down on quantity or quality, you're gonna cut from these three things um, and being aware of what those are and then using that to guide all of the decisions you make going forward. And so whether that's, you know, thinking about does the venue align with your priorities it does you know like in establishing your budget and how much you're going to spend right. focusing your budget on the things that are most important to you and you know not so much on the things that you say are not um and then kind of going you know from there booking your highest priority vendors earlier and your lower priority vendors you know you can wait to book them a little longer um and just like using that to guide the process um i think when couples don't like really take the time to sit down and think through that um they don't realize it until later and then sometimes it's too late especially after booking a venue and then realizing like this venue actually isn't the best fit for this vision we're now crafting for mm -hmm. our wedding like we picked it because it was cheap or we picked it because it was convenient um but now it actually right. you know we can't have the caterer that we want or you know um those th kinds of things and so just really making sure that you're firm and clear on your priorities before making these big decisions absolutely okay and and I love what you said there about um, the priorities not necessarily specifically being a vendor. Um, it could be just like what is most the most important like thing that you want in that day, like spending time with guests. Yeah. Or you know, for me, uh, for me and my fiance, it was like amazing food, <laughs> like <laughs> the kind of foodies. And so, like that was a really big priority when we were going through our options for venue. Um, yeah, that's really, really cool. And I definitely never heard somebody mention like, you know, what are the bottom three? Because it's really smart to have kind of some specificity on like, if we need to cut, where do we cut? Yeah. Um, and that can be really, really helpful. I mean, nobody wants to have to limit their wedding budget. <laughs> but, you know, the reality is that a lot of folks knowing where to look first, that I, that's a great piece of advice. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I wanted to, to, to shift gears and ask you a little bit about, I, I was kind of looking through your materials and such, um, all the things that folks can find on your website, and one of the things that kind of touched my heart was um, the focus on inclusivity um, as you kind of be that change that you see in the industry. What sort of um, brought that about? Was that something that was always a big part of Weddings by Christie from the beginning, or is that something that sort of developed um, as a focus for your for uh, your planning group. Yeah, thanks for asking about that. Definitely a um, a focus from the beginning. I would say it's at the like foundation of um, my my business, and one of the reasons I chose to start it. <laughs> um, and yeah. like a, a, co a fairly common story um, among wedding planners, which is I planned my own wedding. I loved it, um, and that mm -hmm. is what got the gears turning. Um, that maybe I wanted to do this professionally, and it wasn't the first time I had thought about it, but it kind of confirmed this like inkling um, that I had in the back of my mind. And part of that was, you know, I, as you know, as someone who is like, kind of very like type A and also just curious and enjoys research, when I was planning my wedding, I really like dived deep down the rabbit hole um, yeah. of weddings <laughs> um, and felt like I was kind of ended up learning like all there is to know about the industry at large, not just kind of the wedding planning itself. Um, and it just very quickly became clear to me um, mm -hmm. how just like heteronormative um, the industry is. And by that, I mean, it's all about brides and grooms. Um, and it's assumed that there's a bride and a groom. And even more specifically, that um, a lot of focus on the bride um, and that it's expected that the bride is the one who cares the most. It's the bride who's planning. The groom just kind of shows up on the day of and doesn't contribute. Like this is, these are the stereotypes. We've all seen them. Um, if we're on Instagram, if we've seen, you know, TikToks, whatever the case might be, and yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's everywhere. Um, and I'm lucky enough that most of the couples that we work with, and I think part of this is because of the way that we market ourselves, um, both people are involved. You know, sometimes we do have someone like a bit more stereotypical where the there's a bride and there's a groom and the bride is carrying a bit more of the wedding planning weight like that does happen. Um, but, you know, we love to see couples yeah. equally contributing to the day. We find that then it is a more of an authentic representation of them right. as a couple as well as individuals, um, which is great. And, you know, it also just goes back to 
that there's not always a bride at all. Sometimes it's two grooms, sometimes it's two brides. And then also we work with a lot of couples where at least one of them identifies as non-binary and they're not a bride or a groom. So our whole thing and what was important to me from the get-go is we use right. gender neutral language. Um, if you read through our website, you will not find the word bride or groom anywhere on mm -hmm. our website. It's not in our contract. Um, our inquiry form it doesn't say bride's name, groom's name. It right. says partner's names. Um, just these like small things, but that make it really clear to people who that's important to, and I mean, I think it should be important to everybody, but people who it's, you know, um, personally relevant, you know, when you go to fill out a vendor form and it says bride name's groom name, and you're like, we don't have a groom, you immediately feel like this vendor isn't, doesn't want to work with me. This vendor does not work with couples who are like Absolutely. us. Um, and, you know, you kind of immediately feel like excluded from the wedding planning space. Um, and that just like really hurt my heart when I was planning my own wedding. And so that's been very foundational mm -hmm. um, to what we do and all of the resources that we like make for couples are gender neutral. And then of course, like once we're working with couples and they tell us their pronouns and the titles mm -hmm. that they prefer, then we use them with that couple, you know? Um, but in marketing right. in those pre-stages when we don't know, it goes back to, you know, what you said earlier about that assumption free. We enter with no assumptions and then we learn more about you and use that to guide the wedding planning experience. But we don't assume anything about the way right. that you're planning your wedding before you tell us the truth. <laughs> you know, we don't want to assume. <laughs> Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's absolutely amazing. And as somebody who is uh, a groom to be, um, you know, circling back on what you said about sort of the, the work and the focus and the importance of, uh, you know, when, where that usually lies and how um, there's sort of that expectation that it's always uh, the, the bride that cares the yes. most, that does the most work. Um, yeah, I mean, I myself have actually noticed that um, we really bucked tradition. I was part of the very small crew that went wedding dress shopping. Nice. With my <laughs> I love that. So um, I helped her pick her dress, which, which every time I tell somebody that, they're like, I've never heard of that. <laughs> but no, we actually had a blast. And it, it, yeah. <laughs> we are best friends. And so she wanted my opinion. Yeah. Um, and so. It, yeah, it was really, really cool. And I will say that, uh, you know, for us, that's also something that's, you know, really important. We try to avoid any sort of assumptive language. Um, you know, pronouns are very important to us. And, uh, you know, just kind of making sure that it's, it, you know, feels very, very in inclusive. And um, as an industry, I feel like we're catching up slowly. Slowly. But it's but funny it is because happening. As as I'm often <laughs> talking. Yeah. And as, and as the entertainment, I'm often talking to the groom because that is, or, uh, you know, I'm often talking to the person that is maybe not as assumed to be as burdened with the work of planning a wedding um, because they're usually the first to snatch up the thing that's fun. That yes, that's so, that is so true. <laughs> it is always like there's the one person who, it. yeah, is planning all the, like, logistics, details, design, and then the other person's like, I'll do music. And it's like, okay, well, great. Like... <laughs> I see that all the time as well. <laughs> Don't be wrong. I love talking to those people. But it's, also, it's also a lot of fun when I get to chat with couples who are, again, breaking Both that tradition and, yes. and working on things together. Absolutely. And, you know, we are, Felix and Fingers is definitely a huge hit with folks that move away from, um, are kind of interested in moving away from the quote unquote tradition. Yeah. Cause in tradition you have the wedding DJ mm -hmm. and you have the wedding dance band. Yeah. <laughs> and what we do is interactive, you know, engaging entertainment. We're dueling pianos. It's way outside. Now. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> but, um, but not really, but it sort of is. It, you know, we're, the, we're, we find a lot ourselves working with a lot of couples who are interested in bucking the trends and trying something new that's never been seen before. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, I, I want to dive in and talk a little bit uh, more specifically about kind of what it means to work with Christy. Okay. <laughs> so um, I guess let's start by talking about, I, I know there's a few options for, you know, committing with weddings with Christy, but what, how involved are you typically with uh, the planning process once you get started? How is that a different from like, say package to package? What, is, what does that process look like for you? Yeah, so we offer everything from just coordination all the way up to full planning. And then we have our, our in-between options. And so kind of how 
involved we are. It depends on that yeah. package. But um, on like the lowest end with just coordination, we start working with the couple three months out. Um, and that's very important to us and to be found a little earlier than some other planners do. Um, but we have found in order to be the most successful that that is the right amount of time because it gives us enough time to connect with all of the vendors right. and introduce ourselves and create a timeline and then get feedback from the vendor team on that timeline and workshop it. And then um, also it's early enough that if the couple did maybe make some mistakes as they planned on their own um, or you know missed some things, it gives us enough time to catch it <laughs> um, and course correct, um, which we would not be able to do if uh -huh. we were starting one month out. You know, like catering and like, you know, often like bands and right. musicians need like the song choices before that, you know, um, catering needs meals, and um, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so um, we start with them early enough that we can make sure all those boxes are being checked and nothing's being overlooked. Um, but then kind of from there, any of the other packages, we start immediately. So as soon as they book, whether it's five months in advance, one year, two years, you'll start working with us um, right away. And then the level of support will vary. And so our most popular option is our signature package, um, which is our signature support. And with that, you're, you know, sourcing your own like vendors you're the one who's reaching out and getting info from them but you do have access to our recommended vendor list and so we're happy to um, give our industry favorites um, and then you get access to all of our resources so we have spreadsheets guides templates kind of everything you need to plan your wedding and then you get unlimited calls with us so um, like a wedding planner in your back pocket so um, anytime you need to talk about anything you feel stuck want to workshop something you can just get on our calendar and we'll and we'll chat um, and then the higher kind of full planning packages you know those include more in-person things we're doing more of the leg work to like reach out to vendors get quotes and availability um, things like that um, you know versus the those kind of mid, mid or lower tier packages so really kind of whatever level people are looking for we usually you know we have an option that's awesome so uh, there's so many things in there that I, I wanted to, to kind of unpack yeah that is super cool that you know folks have you know full access to you all um, it gets me so excited thinking about it that I, I should probably ask, uh, what does this this coming season, like what is sort of the, the wave of folks that you're seeing book for you right now? Um, do you still have availability in 24? Um, are we starting to look at 25? What is that? How, how are things shaping up for you and going forward? Yeah, I'd say for 2024, we have like a few spots left. Um, September, October are pretty much booked, done. Um, maybe there's a spot in there <laughs> if someone's looking for coordination only um but we're we're pretty booked um for the fall that is the mm -hmm. busiest time in the dc area for those who don't know um and then you know for november though we, we're starting to get like some inquiries for people who are just looking for coordination um, we already have a few weddings on the calendar but we have some more space um and then also for like the summer if people are looking for just coordination um you know we can start sure. that um start that now we ideally at least two months in advance like i said because we prefer the three um, but it just depends on on the couple um, and we are already booking for 2025 and we have one wedding for 2026 so um, we are full full speed ahead <laughs> oh my goodness yeah love, love that so one of the other things that you mentioned uh, was that you guys have a uh, preferred vendor list um, that you that you offer out that's awesome so do we and uh, just so you know you're on it yes and you, you are um, on ours as well actually, uh, for anybody that does <laughs> love that love to hear that um, but we'll actually be offering we're offering kind of a cool incentive because we want to work with Christy um, so we're actually going to be presenting a 5% discount to any couples uh, that sign on with Weddings by Christy. Awesome. Love that. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And I do believe I saw a little message from you uh, before we connected um, that couples actually who work with us are all getting a little uh, little something for free from you, I, one of your add-on services, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and we have a variety of add-on options, and so they can pick um, which one they want based off what's most relevant to their needs. And so whether that's us sourcing their hotel blocks um, or building out their wedding website for them, invitations. We have a few different add-on options so they can pick mm -hmm. um, whatever is most helpful for them and we're happy to throw it in for free if they let us know that they came from you. <laughs> As somebody 
who is in the process of putting together the wedding website for my wedding. <laughs> That's that that would be the add-on. <laughs> Yeah. I um I consider myself tech savvy, but I'm not that tech savvy. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> well, Christy, this has just been a blast. Uh, I have had a, an amazing time talking with you. I only have one question left for you, um, and this is just something that kind of a fun question. You know, you mentioned that you're married. I'd love to hear. Do you have like a favorite moment from your own wedding, or even just your love story? Something kind of romantic that you wouldn't mind sharing with us before we go. Yeah, sure. I can give the like too long didn't read version of my yes. husband and I story because <laughs> um, it is um, a bit long. But um, uh. we originally met in college. Um, we both um, we went to the same college. We had classes together, but didn't really like talk much. We just kind of, you know, knew of each other's existence. Um, and then it wasn't until we were both in Washington, D.C. the same summer doing separate internships um, that we connected. Um, and it was just like we hit it off instantly and realized that we had a lot in common. We really vibed. Um, and then we spent the rest of that summer together. Um, and then, though, I was leaving to study abroad in Finland. And so um, I was like, nope, not getting into a relationship right now, but thank you so much. Um, and then I left <laughs> and went to Europe. Um, but then once I got back, um, went back to our college town to finish my last semester of college. And then that's when we started dating. Um, and so it's just, you know, it took us from like having to travel all the way to DC um, in order to like finally connect. And then also now we've moved back and we live in DC where it, you know, kind of, it all started. So DC um, is, you know, means a lot to us for a lot of reasons. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. It, that, it's almost like a hallmark. <laughs> so, well, Christy, I so appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. I'm really excited to see you in yes. June. Um, I'm certain that there's going to be a lot of folks that are super excited to, to see the things we've talked about. Um, and yeah, that's just amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Thanks for listening to another episode of Eventful Endeavors, Secrets to Crafting the Perfect Celebration. We hope to have left you with some actionable ideas for your own event. If you like the show, please subscribe and definitely leave us a review. We read every comment. So until next time, happy planning and see you soon on Eventful Endeavors.